Hello, Eric. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's like it's taking forever to. There it is. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you yet. Okay. Wait, hold on a second here. All good. Standing by. Pre preferences. Video. Where is video? Nope. Here it is. Video. Oh, wait. Now can you see? Wait. How... The video's working. Wait. We're. Oh, oh. There's the problem. Boom. Boom. There it is. Oh. In all of okay. your splendor. I love it. There you go. All right. Ready. Man. Awesome. By the way, you'd be a really good, the voice is so smooth. I feel like you could walk me through <laughs> any troubleshooting on my computer and I feel, I feel relaxed already. Well, I just uh. did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Eric. My name is Stefan. It's a pleasure to meet you. You too. How are you doing, buddy? Dude, Can I am doing fantastic. This. Splendid. All oh, right. got to do a little adjusting of the yeah 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 because I, I just because this is my gaming setup too so i had this whole thing it's like a whole it's a whole it's a whole nonsense thing like you know they they don't make this stuff easy man technology is just not <laughs> you know what i mean it's just this, this whole thing is like, it could be a it could be a nightmare and they, they make and then they make it seem like it's so easy they just go oh you just do this this and this and it's like yeah but the average person just like they barely know how to work their remote control on their tv nowadays you know what i mean Oh my gosh, I know with all the buttons that are on there and everything. I feel like Yeah, all the modes and like, you know, it's like, what are you talking about? Make this easier, man. Oh, I know. You know, maybe if they had your voice attached to it where it's like, press <laughs> this mode button. I could be the new Siri. They call me Sammy or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh the man, new I Sammy. Hey even Griffin. Hey Griffin, can uh can you order me lunch? Yeah. You know what? I think they are doing that, though. I think there are certain celebrity voices that are doing Siri. <clears throat> I just don't know if they I, you know how they do those deep fakes. I think they can do that mm. with the voice now, too. I think they can do that. Well, you have to just go in and record like, you you know, a certain words and they could just take from and make it all be whatever, I guess. Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Or yeah, just some kind of like, some, sentences. Yeah. Or, or some kind of algorithm that can, can manipulate the voice. I don't know. It's all it's like it's like it's like Star Trek or something. I don't know when we're going to be there. You ever look at like a movie that's supposed to be like, you know, maybe like. Like you see a movie from 2000 and then like in the movie, it's supposed to be the year 2021 or something. Right. And then you look at the technology that they thought was going to be now and it just yeah. looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just looks old and stupid. And you just go, nah, you guys were wrong about what was going to be going on right now. So. Yeah, yeah. The the only thing in the movies that predicted things in 2021 and around our time that I thought was cool was like those huge consoles with the touch screens where they're just like whoosh, moving their, their oh, arms. Oh, right, right, and... right. That's not here yet. Yeah, like uh what was that one? Minority Report with uh Yes. Uh yes. With Tom Cruise, right? Like we're still waiting for that. I mean, I I, I yeah. Like I like, remember Google Glass? Like it was so stupid. Cause it was this dumb thing that, you know, I had a pair of them and I think I, lo I lost them actually. It's really dumb. I don't know what happened to them, but, but I mm -hmm. think that they, we're, we're almost there. Like I wear glasses anyway. So we're almost at yeah. a point where, yeah, where it would be like, this is your computer. And like, you're, you know, you're walking down the street and it like, you know, catches somebody, then it, you know, their profile comes up, you know, like, boop, 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 you know what I mean? Like if somebody's, oh, or somebody could be sharing their Instagram and it's like, oh, their Instagram is right there. You could just be like, like, if you want to. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. It's I wonder That's what future, happened. I yeah, I was gonna ask what happened to Google Glass. I know they did look a little goofy, like you looked like Cyclops it was just dumb. before puberty. Yeah. It's the um to me, it's the um what do you call it? It's like the voice texting technology. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something it's not quite right. You know when you're voice texting and then it says something that you didn't say and you're just like, uh because uh, they haven't quite figured out that they, they haven't mastered the technology yet, but it's out there, right? So there's some glitches. And I think that that Google Glass stuff is the same kind of thing. I don't think it's quite where they want it to be because it's not practical, you know, because the because the, I think cosmetics are an important part of aesthetics are an important part of mm -hmm. that technology. 
people don't want to be wearing some you know thing on their face that looks like this you know what i mean they're gonna be like they're gonna look dumb walking down the street with that you know so they 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 need to make it where it's simple it's just this or like contacts you know and then you can have all yeah. this data like present you know yeah 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 exactly like some ray-ban some aviators or something that right you right right some kind of porn yeah you put something on, yeah like you're you, you, like your favorite show is just on right here you know even yeah. as I'm, you know, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. You can easily do calls. I mean, that's the, they think that's going to be the future because they, they are always showing that in movies where it's like, you know, you know, they're doing this boop. Hello. You know, Hey, what's going on? You know, double tap, whatever that thing is, yeah. or it's going to be like connect, you know, like somehow it's following your eyes and it's telling, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see where technology is going in the future. But for right now, this is what it is, what it is. Right. What is something that you're looking forward to for the future that you're just hoping, let's say 2040 rolls around, you're like, this needs to be here at this point in time? Um, I hope it's medical advancements, honestly. Yeah. You know? That's a good point. I hope it's like, you know, I hope we've cured dementia. I hope we've cured herpes and, you know what I mean? All those kinds of things. The things that, the everyday things that, you know, that I hope they've made it, you know, you know what I mean? Like th those kind yeah. of things. I just think that, uh, that's what I look forward to is, is the medical advancements. That's really cool. Yeah. I, that's way better than my answer. Cause I was hoping for the swipey things where you could just swipe the visual <laughs> screens. So I totally, <laughs> yeah, I totally get, I totally made you feel guilty about it. You feel like a piece of <laughs> shit right now. Cause you're like hoping for something. And I'm like, I'm trying to make the world better. And you're like, yeah, I just want some convenience with my swipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, it is God. what it is. Well, hey, uh, if there's a Miss America pageant, I'm out. You, you're definitely in. But <laughs> yeah, I have the, I yeah, I definitely have the right answer for the pageant. <laughs> I want, I want oh, the man. world to be a better place, you know. <laughs> and I want to swipe right in real life. But <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, well, Eric, it is an absolute pleasure to have you on a comedy advice podcast with me. Your oh, host, okay. Stephen I forgot Satani. what we were. Yeah. I forgot what we were even doing here. All right. Yeah. got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just felt so comfortable. We were just rolling in it. And, uh, I almost, yeah. I was like, did I record? Yes, I recorded. It's, uh, 200 episodes in, you just get those habits. I'm like, oh, I want to yeah. make sure that this episode reaches the public. So, right. um, but anyway, it's a pleasure to have you and you're going to be here in Phoenix, Arizona tomorrow yeah, tomorrow yeah when is this coming out is this coming out today are you putting this out today or what are you doing oh i'm expediting this yes i'm amazoning oh, okay, gotcha. this this is prime shipping so it's going out to the masses <laughs> tonight all right yeah so i'll be in phoenix tomorrow uh completely uh, uh, full transparency is i'm nervous as hell about it um not even just because of the, the travel and worrying about covid and all that stuff just because i haven't done you know comedy like this in a year you know, mm -hmm. I, I've done mm -hmm. shows in LA and I've done small shows and but sporadically, but the consistent comedy that I was doing a year ago, I have not done. So this is, you know, I, I, I do feel a little pressure that I'm putting on myself to go and remember my jokes and the notes that I've jot down. So it's going to be like a hodgepodge, a little, I'm going to be Frankenstein in this set just to see if it come, comes out all right. So, you know. It's a, Man. this is a, I, I need my own comedy advice right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to say too, I think that the, the audiences, at least the people that are going out to the shows, I feel like they are so hungry for jokes that their, their understanding of the whole situation where it's like, I think a lot you'd of like to are, think you'd like, you'd, you'd like to think that that's the case, but you know, people, we, you know, people are spoiled, especially in a mob in a group like that. People are spoiled. People have expectations. People feel entitled, you know, and once there's yeah. money, once there's a money transfer, people think like, well, hey, this better be the best show I've ever seen in my life. I paid, uh, you know, $20 or whatever I paid for it. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure you're going to do great. And there are, it's Thursday <laughs> through the so good luck. Uh, I'm going to be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, that was a winning. Were... That was a winning endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, you're gonna do great. I promise. No, but I, my wife and I are gonna be there rooting you on on Friday. Oh, that's great. I All right, cool. So we're really excited. And I, I was gonna it's say Saturday too, I mean, morning. Saturday morning, you take the podcast down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, archive it. No, but yeah. um, you've been. I mean, I feel like you've been doing so many cool things in the pandemic. Where you've got Riffin with Griffin, which has been going on since 2018. And I mean, God, wow, incredible. <laughs> yeah. I can't even believe it. 
and incredible guests too. I mean, I love it. I was listening to the past couple of episodes, Andrew Santino, one with your fiance, Rachel, um, you also give <laughs> yeah, I just from- do a lot with, I do a lot with her right now, just because what am I supposed to do? Like, I, it's so hard to get guests. I don't want to get guests sometimes. And it's just like, I'm trying to like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying to get a different audience. I want the audience just to watch me because they want to watch me. You know, if, if they mm-hmm. just want to watch a big guest that they like, I mean, then it's, then, then it isn't about me, you know? So, you know, right. so I'm trying to like build, you know, and so it is what it is. And sure enough, I've had a couple of guests and those episodes are just, they don't do well unless people mm-hmm. know, like they know the person, which is like, I go, oh, that means they don't trust me. That's how I look at it. I look at it as like the audience at whole, like they don't trust Riffin with Griffin. They don't trust me yet enough to be like, well, let me find out what's going on with whoever that is, who I don't know who it is, you know? So mm-hmm. you just have to like, you know, you keep going, you build your audience the, the however it is you know so mm-hmm. that's where i'm at right now you know so i almost mm-hmm. feel like i'm in a renaissance of my podcast of like starting over and like rebuilding rebranding rebuilding my audience is like hey th- you need to come because you want to see me you know do what i do nice so it was griffin dark ages now griffin renaissance and then <laughs> yeah, 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 the griffin yeah, modern yeah. times are coming soon but <laughs> I, I remember hearing you on uh, take your shoes off with rick glassman where you were talking about that too and it, it's such an interesting thing too, because I feel like I, I agree with you. Where there's, if you get guests on, you know, just for people to come listen, and then they're they're in there for the guests, and then they duck out after that episode because they're not yeah. really feeling you. You're, you, I think you're taking the right approach, and I like what you're doing, and I want to be able to do that too. And then you also had mentioned too, it's like the dynamic sometimes is different when it's just me, oh, and it's I, super I, different. I I realize that I no because. You know, you have to be aware of like why people like you, right? So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's like, so why do people like the people like me when I'm with Bobby Lee? They love that. Okay. So if it's me, Bobby and his, and his brother, people love that. They love that dynamic, that interaction. And so I'm different when I'm with these people. Like even when like Santino and I, when him and I are together, we're, we have a rapport that we're doing. I'm mm-hmm. not that guy when I'm by myself. I find myself, so I have to, I have to like find a way to bridge the gap, find some sort of middle ground or, you know, and and you have to remember that too, because ultimately this is entertainment. It is for, you know, if people like, oh, I like funny version of you. Where is that guy when you're by yourself? You seem to be too serious or whatever it is like that. I have to Mm -hmm. find some sort of mix, you know, because at the same time too, I do like just discussing things and giving my opinion and being able to sit here and just talk to nobody is, uh, you know, that's a gift. It's a skill. It's not necessary. Not everybody can necessarily do that and, you know, stay captivating or whatever it is like that. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm accomplishing that. And, you know, it's hard, you know, but, you know, hey, you just put out episodes and you see what happens. Who cares, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just let the let the fans comment and then i there are even reaction videos to your uh to your yeah. episodes too now so just weird react yeah i know i yeah that was that was weird some just weird bizarre guy i was like i was like wow this i thought flattered at first and then you know you get then you get upset because you're like oh man you're that's not what i said you know what i mean <laughs> right 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 you know? oh man i i think well obviously you're doing something right if people are taking the time to be able to try and get attention based off of yeah 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 yeah, what yeah. You're that's, doing. The, that's the best yeah, yeah 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 that's how i look at it too i go well i'm doing something because this guy's trying to capitalize on my limited fame you know what i mean <laughs> like what is that mm-hmm. you know so i agree yeah yeah and and i was gonna say too you also um are getting a lot of success on twitch too you're a pretty avid yeah gamer. i game i've been gaming every day you know just because i so that's all i i mean I, I was already sort of doing it and then mm-hmm. And then I just, the pandemic hit and I was like, well, let me just try this. And then it's just started to be like, a, oh, okay, this is a thing. Then I started to look into it and see all the things. And then I started to get all these opportunities be in, from the gaming world. So I was like, all right, I'm a streamer now. I'm, I'm you know, so I'm, I'm in there, I'm doing it. So, and you can catch me every day on Twitch, Eric Griffin Gaming. Nice. And I've seen a lot of the, some of the clips on Instagram and stuff too. And it's, it's, 
it's so strange because I don't game anymore. I consider myself a retired gamer since I got married. My wife and I decided right. it was better for me not to game. So um, <laughs> I do things like pull weeds and wash the dishes. But right. it is, uh, it, it's really cool to see. And I don't know, there's something captivating about it. Where at first when I heard about just watching people play, I was like, I, I don't know what the appeal is. But then I started watching and clips of yours. And I was like, there's some- okay. I see yeah. this. There's something there's something weird about how people can sit and watch. Like people will tell me that, you know, they're they're at work and they just have it on and they're just watching me in the background and I'm, you know, I'm talking smack or whatever I'm doing. And so it's like there is something about people love watching people game for whatever reason it is. Whether it is that person's personality or they appreciate this person's really great at the game. So I'm not that like like I'm not great at the game. So it's like mm-hmm. You know, they're watching me because I'm that a personality. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm mon- trying to just monetize my own personality, uh, and so I'm just using the Twitch um, um, platform, and it's great. Yeah, and I, and I feel like too, as an observation, I feel like I see a lot of comedians that are going off and they're doing a lot of different things other than stand up. And obviously, you're uh, an accomplished actor as well. I mean, with with um, Workaholics, which I also just read 20 minutes ago. They're gonna, you guys are gonna have a movie coming out. Yep. I just, I didn't know that it was officially saying it out loud because Adam hit me up uh, about a week ago, told me about it. So I didn't even know. I'm at it. And I was like, is it a secret? It's like, yeah, it's still a secret. So I guess today mm-hmm. it's not a secret because they let, let everybody know. So yeah, a workaholics movie on Paramount Plus. Uh, so no one will see it. But you know, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> You know, it is what it is what it is. You know what I mean? Good for them for trying. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's oh, great. Man. You know? Oh, it just seems there are so many street it seems like there are so I many know. media rivers now. It's like I can only swim in one of the And a they time. don't last, man. By the way, I was rocking DC Universe for a second. Okay. And I loved it. DC Universe, you were able to watch Doom Patrol, you were able to watch Titans, and you were able to watch. Uh, oh, nice. They had this other show. They had another, you know, and then you get to watch all the movies, and, you, and then they had comic books on there. And I was like, oh, this is cool, actually. It wasn't that expensive, $7 a month. It was great, you know, if, you, if mm-hmm. you're into that world. And I thought DC Universe was the rated R branch of the DC Universe. You know, they were. Yeah. It was, like everything was rated R. It was gory. It was like, you know, uh-huh. like filthy language. And I was like, oh, I love this, right? <laughs> now it's gone. It's, just, it's gone. They, they, you know, they, they, they basically all the that programming they were doing is moving to HBO Max, you know. So then oh. I was like, okay, yeah. So okay. you know, you, you, you're, you know, you're interested to see if these things gonna work. I mean, all these people think they they want to be Netflix. They think they want to be Netflix, you know. Mm-hmm. So they go, we're gonna have our own streaming service, and we're gonna get people. But it's like, no, man. It would have been better for them to work with Netflix. They already got the audience, and and then you're not giving enough content to justify this. Like like Apple TV, yeah. what a disaster! It is just a complete disaster. You know what I mean? Like no one why I watch like I do love Servant. That's the one show I watch on there. But I don't even know if it's justified the money that I pay to keep Apple TV. You know, it's yeah. like you, you you're paying for these things. You know, it's like you yeah. know what was that one? What was the one they had on the uh, Quibi? You know, quit being, oh, you, know, yeah. they, they, you know, they just try with you. They go, Hey, we're going to capitalize on this thing. And it's just like, no, nah, man, you're, you, you haven't established yourself enough yeah, for the people to be like, Oh, I have to get that. It's like, you kind of just go, what's the easiest, what's the most convenient, you know? So I don't know. I think yeah. they're doing, I think all everybody having their own service is not the way to do it. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like it's almost all these it's all these different restaurants that are opening up and they're like, we've got really good lettuce on our burgers. And they're like, are the burgers good? No. Buns? No. But the lettuce is is great. And people are like, but okay, even, well, I don't. But I would say even more so. I, see, I don't even think of it like that. I think of it more like, I think of it more like everybody was at a mall. It was at a big super mall, mm. you know? You know, and it yeah. was convenient because there's a there's that restaurant, there's this restaurant, there's that restaurant, there's this store, and it was a convenient. It was working. It was like this, like you know, this whole little uh, this little you know universe that people could come to and and see all the different things and everything. And this was great, and that was great. Maybe that's not so great, but it's connected to something that is great. So it's all right here. No, what these people want to do is they want to leave the mall and they want to go ten miles down the road, and it's great. It might be the best food you've ever tasted, but you're like, I kind of don't want to go there. I kind of go to go yeah. where everything else is because yeah. this is convenient. 
<laughs> yeah, no, you know, I agree. Like, I it, they want to build their own mall now, so you're like, yeah. you have to go and, out and, of and this then they mall. try. Then they, they yeah. try to build the mall, and you go, yeah, but you only got one store in here, you know? Then it's yeah. like everything's yeah. boarded up. You're like, well, we're trying to get more stores. And you're like, okay, well, let me know when you got enough stores because I'm gonna be over here where the mall that that's been working that you were in, you were in this mall, <laughs> you know, and it was working fine, you know. So exactly, exactly. Right. I, I, oh man, you totally upped my restaurant metaphor to the mall metaphor. Perfect. <laughs> I, I agree. But, but I mean, that, that, that is really, yeah, yeah, but that is really exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to giving the, the Paramount, Paramount streaming service a free trial to watch the movie. And then, uh, never, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what, you know, that, that, that's what you do for everything. Even when I was on Showtime, I was telling people that, hey, don't start watching the show. Let it, let the whole 10 episodes come out. Get the free trial, binge watch it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, yeah, it sucks. It's like, oh that. man. And, and I was going to ask too, speaking of Showtime, because I know you were on the show. Hey, I'm, I'm dying. What is it? I'm dying here. I'm dying up dying? here. I'm, I'm dying, dying up here. here. Yeah, that's, why, that's why I got canceled. Nobody oh, fuck. can figure out the title, know what it is. <laughs> it's, no, it's uh, thank you for giving me a lot of credit, but I just totally, I, it's, I hope the dementia really gets solved in 20 years because it's already starting to go. 20 but, for, for, it looks like we need this in like a few weeks the way you're going right now. <laughs> yes, exactly. They're like, abandon the swipe project. Let's get on the brain right now. Yeah. But yeah. I think, um, and, and you also had two specials on Showtime, which were fantastic. Uh, American Warrior. See, I remembered that one in The Ugly Truth. And yeah. um, I, I thought they were both fantastic. And I know that American Warrior, I'd heard on an interview too, um, that they were talking about this with you as well, where um, that one had some really prov thought provoking points to the comedy as well. And I know you had mm -hmm. said that you had intentionally done that. And I thought it was very well executed. Um, well, I appreciate and, that, you know, but you know, it is what it is, you know, like, you know, unfortunately, like comedy comes and goes so fast right now that, you know, the people are doing it specials different not, right now it used to be like they, they needed to be evergreen, meaning they mm -hmm. needed to be like, you could play them at any time, and they'll be relevant to what's happening. So those, but those jokes become sort of vanilla. It's like, when you're in a relationship, right. and then you're just talking about generalizations and things like that. But you know, because we're so specific, and the, and the world is so connected. You know, you got it. You end up doing jokes that are about what's happening now, you know. Yeah. But what happens is when now is gone, then what? <laughs> you know, then it's then what? Then people are looking at this like it's like you're looking at a movie where it's like five years earlier. You know what I mean? And then, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so. But you know what? Well, I'm still feeling the maybe it's because I'm hungry. I'm feeling the restaurant and the food. But it's like those <laughs> those quality jokes. It's like the quality ingredients. They don't they're not stacked with preservatives. So the flavor is delicious in that moment. You really have to savor right. that moment. And then afterwards, it it rots and and um, it, it might not be as good in the moments forward. But in that moment, it's really good. And I think even yeah. though it was in 2018, listening to it last week, and, and I, I was still feeling the points where you were talking about uh, Do <laughs> Donald Trump saying that there were talking about in Charlottesville, oh, there are yeah, good, yeah, people, there on are good people on both sides. Yeah, I just thought to yeah. myself, and that's the, you know, and I didn't want to turn into a thing where I was just talking about Trump the whole time, because even in my mind, I thought, you know what, who knows where the world's going to be by the time this comes out, or where he's going to be, or what he's going to be doing. So, you know, you make you make your one point and then you move on, you know, yeah. but you know, there are certain people that like my buddy, Maz Jabrani, he just, he was just on the podcast and you know, he mm -hmm. had a special where he talked about Trump a lot and it's like, it came yes. out, the guy's gone, you know, he's not even on Twitter anymore. So it's like, you know, it's the kind of thing where it could change like this, the world changes yeah. like that. So, and then also look, here we are in a pandemic. So who knows what, like what, how this is going to affect comedy and how people talk about comedy or what people talk about for the next, you know, freaking five years to a decade really yeah yeah absolutely and i feel like i um i, I do e-commerce as, as my nine to five and they were talking about technology is advanced at like 10 years in just this year based off of all yeah, the needs and all the things yeah and, and i'm sure with comedy too all these different um streams and and different avenues of being able to entertain folks have probably well evolved well, at a would, rate yeah, Go but ahead, I would sorry. say com comedy is like dentistry, you know, there's only so much advancing you can do, you know, you, you know, that's why they still have a medieval hook, you know what I mean? It's like when you go to the dentist, it's still a pirate hook, 
you know, because this is the best version of it. You know, so no matter how advanced we think we are in technology, you go into the dentist office, you're like, you mean you still using a hook in 2021? You're like, yeah, this is the best shit. So yeah, and if you ask questions, the you'll get a, a treasure at the end, the little lollipop. Yes. Yeah, so it's, you know, so yeah, so I get it. Comedy's in. I feel like comedy's the same way. There's nothing past an audience. You know, this is the purest version of it. Is standing on a crowd, standing on a stage, in front of a audience full of people that are they're right you know that is the purest form of it that can't be that can't be changed it can't there's no advancing that you know and not mm -hmm. everything else is just it just pales in comparison everything else just sucks yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i i get it it's kind of like oh uh you know the format of comedy and just the way that it's it's structured or at least stand-up comedy with yeah. okay a person is speaking to the audience and then there's that live feeling of yeah. that connection between the content yeah. and the the, yeah. the audience and and the moment that really sparks that laugh. It's almost like, oh yeah, we can do basketball, but we're gonna do live streaming basketball where everyone's doing it from Zoom. It just doesn't work, you know. Exactly. So yeah, you're like, I'm, I'll, I passed you the ball. You're like, oh, got it. You know, you're like, <laughs> you, know you, yeah. can't, you can't do that. There's there's certain things that like this is the purest form of it. So yeah, I mean this is just this is just what what people have had to learn is how do i monetize my personality mm -hmm. how do i that's all it is how do i mm -hmm. stay relevant stay out there stay in the public eye it's it's you know you have to use the technology that's out there you do podcasts you know you do you know you do you, you get on clubhouse you, you get on the reels and TikTok and all these things these are just ways to connect with people but the pureness the the the, the base level is you are who you are, whatever your personality is, your your sensibility, your point of view, those are the things you're trying to get out there. And these are just avenues. These are just ways to do it. But you know, mm -hmm. and you still you need all of it along with though, we need a that spot where people we advertise on all these things for people to come watch us live and get that feeling and that connection. So hopefully now, let the me world gets back. Yeah, yeah. And now let me ask you something. Do you think that having the podcast and having these ways of people getting to know you at that personal level where, we, especially without the guests, where it's just you doing solo episodes at some points, do you feel like that's helping nurture this connection that's allowing when you do yeah. go out to shows and stuff, people, they, they're they really excited to see you and that connection is is more than just like, oh, uh, you're like Montez from Workaholics or you're like this character that they saw. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I think that that's, but that's what was happening even before um, the, the pandemic. pandemic hit. I mean, that's what was happening with a lot of comics. You know, you look mm -hmm. like a guy like Tom Segura, you know, Pope pre his podcast, Tom's always been a really funny guy. But something about the podcast and connecting with his crowd has, you know, now he has a huge audience and it's a whole different market, a whole different thing that he's doing. Bert Kreischer, same kind of thing, you know, it's like all these guys, you know what I mean, that that are like follow, you know, following, you know, behind Joe Rogan and, you know, mm -hmm. but they're all these guys, they have a huge following and they're doing their thing and it, that's they've reached their audience and their audience, they have a community. That's what happens. This, you know, I see it even when you game on Twitch, you know, you, you create a community, you know, and these people come and they keep coming back and they start chatting and they're always chatting You're like, hey, I'm a part of the Air Griffin gaming community, you know, and then you, you want and so as the artist as the person, you know, you want it to grow. You want it to go from 200 to 1,000, 1,000 to 5,000, 5,000 to 20,000. You know, that's what you you want to find, you know, the people, you want to reach as many people as you can. That's what these things provide. And then, you know, yeah, these other platforms, things like this, you know, there might be somebody that maybe knows me from Workaholics and they go, oh, hey, that's that guy from Workaholics. And they go, oh, wow, actually that guy is not even like that guy. Here's this yeah. guy, you know? And it's like they figure out, oh, I think I like that. I want to hear more of what he has to say. Oh, he's funny or whatever. And I want to go watch mm -hmm. him, you know. So, you know, you know, it is what it is. Now, here's a very ignorant question, because I was thinking about comics, making money, obviously touring, doing shows and things like that. Merch being one of those things for Twitch. And this is an ignorant question because I am not a frequent member of Twitch. But do they do gamers? Do they have, you know, like Air Jordans? Do they, oh, have, yeah, like, they have their own controllers? Yeah, Everybody's got, yeah, of course. Wouldn't wouldn't that make sense? Why wouldn't they? Yeah, have that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't see why not. But do you have yeah. 
griffin controllers like the i don't i don't have a sponsorship like that but i you know if you i have a on my website i have the eric griffin store you know and i have shirts and nice. you know i have you know we all have, you know all that kind of stuff you know little things come up and they make it so easy now that like you know say something happens on the stream and i say something and then people it catches on then you can just yeah. put that on a shirt that's amazing and the people that follow you they might be like oh i'll buy a couple i want to buy that i want to buy that you know then you just move on to uh -huh. another one they make it easy you know before you had to be like here's my thing I go to the print shop and then you have to get the screening and then it's like, you know, I got to buy 500 because you, you know, it's cheaper to oh, buy 500 yeah. of them. And that, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like technology yeah. has made that easier as well. Awesome. Well, really cool. Well, Eric, we're going to get into some, the advice portion of the podcast okay. where fans have sent in questions from what I call the barnacles of the internet, like Yahoo answers, Reddit, Quora, et got cetera. It. Got it. Uh, before we get into the questions, I like to make sure we're nice and inspired. So I have an inspirational quote to help get us jazzed. But before I present okay. mine, <laughs> I, I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes on top of mind that they just cling to when they have dark days or just need to get out of bed or write a joke well, or go ahead. I, I, this something that people ask me all the time about, like, you know, I want to be a comic and what do you do? And, mm -hmm, and I always mm -hmm. tell them the same thing. That's something that I heard a long time ago. And it's just, people don't fail. They quit. Ooh. So keep going. You know what I mean? Keep going until you've exhausted it and then you decide to change. But that's usually what my advice to people. <laughs> shit oh, eric even the way that your voice just lowered a little bit that was oh my god that should be on there a shirt go. if it's not already that's right? beautiful god all right well i feel i have not heard that one before love it i'm inspired i'm going to share mine it's actually not by any philosopher comedian or mm -hmm. uh, einstein it's by a robot and it's called okay. Inspirobot. So what it does is it takes, it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman, and then just mm -hmm. mashes them together for an inspirational quote. So I'll read mm -hmm. it. Eric, you can tell me how it speaks to you and if it's inspiring. <clears throat> this week, Inspirobot says, give guilt tripping a try. Give guilt it. tripping a try. Yeah, that was it. I'm sorry. I, I said it like there was going to be more. I feel yeah. like there should be more. I tried to do yeah. it with the Griffin timber, but it just didn't execute. <laughs> you don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> guilt tripping? Yeah, I guess. I mean, my mom did it all. The, she does it all the time, and she gets what she wants. I have to come over and, and help her make the casserole. So, Well, yeah, I've I mean, guilt. I mean, it's just – that's just a form – I mean – Obviously, when you guilt trip somebody, there is some honesty there of like, it's just an approach. Guilt tripping is an approach to something. It's just a bad communication style, <laughs> you know, but it's something that's needed. It's like, I always say about hypocrites, you know, there's one mm -hmm. thing about a hypocrite. They're usually right. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> say what you want about a hypocrite, but they're right. You know, if, I'm a, if I'm a smoker and I tell, if I say to you, you know, you got to quit smoking because it's bad for you. And then I take a puff of a cigarette. I'm a hypocrite, but I'm right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is very true. You're just dropping little pearls of advice everywhere here. <laughs> God, that's very true. So, so guilt tripping, though, I think I would avoid it. Sounds like, Eric, you would also not guilt trip. Do you guilt trip? Oh, I, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Everybody does. Especially if you're in a relationship, you know what I mean? Of course you'd go trip. Oh yeah. That's like a must. That's yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The beginner's guy. Yeah, it's, like you know, it's, like it's like, you don't want to get out of bed and you want your, your girl to get you some water. And she's like, I don't want to get up. you like, all right, well, remember that time I, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 that's always, it's always a guilt trip is like, there's always a scoreboard in a relationship. There's always a scoreboard. That is very true for me. It's when I get the man flu. Although since I've been practically quarantined, I've, been uh healthy as an ox but uh, i know me too right i'm taking my vitamin d i'm doing that stuff it's like yeah my girl actually my girl wasn't feeling well yesterday the other day she just was dehydrated or something and she just and she's like such a baby when she's sick you know what i mean i need you you know what i mean i was <laughs> you know she's you know she's cuddle with me and i'm just laying with her and she's like i love this so much i never want this to end you know what i mean <laughs> then you're just kind of like oh, okay 
you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely, I felt that before. We then she starts feeling better. She, she starts feeling better. And she's like, did you brush your teeth today? And it's like, okay. And we're back and we're back. You know what I mean? We're back. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my, you know, back just to like scheduled that. programming. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. God. Man. Yeah. That's the same with me and my wife. We snuggle on the couch and then she's like, will you please watch the bachelor with me? And I'm like, well, if it'll make, Ugh, it that's what we were doing the other night. Oh man. I, uh, I, I think I've watched, unfortunately, I, sad to admit this, the last five or six seasons because yeah, this is my I'm first married. time ever. The first time I was ever watching it was yeah. Last the, whatever the bachelorette was the first time I watched it. Cause it was such a train wreck. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 And now this one, the guy is boring. It's so boring. The guy is so boring. He's yes. just the most boring guy. I was like, ugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Although I, I'm I'm looking forward to the last or the next episodes because I'm seeing and I know your white I know tears. your white guilt is the only reason why you're continuing to watch. You don't want to watch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard for you to be like, ah, I don't want to watch this. And somebody's like, oh, it's because the bachelor's black. And you're like, no, no. Oh, no it's no and you have to like so <laughs> that that's an example so, of the bachelor guilt tripping me and then yep, I'm, tweet, yep. I'm retweeting all the tweets being like loving this episode the, the most Yo, dramatic this is great. Season. he's the best bachelor we've ever had you're like Ugh. <laughs> oh man all right well now that we're nice and inspired we'll go into the questions so this first question right. is found by our fan isa thank you isa she, she uh found it on reddit and it says I showed her my bitch face, and since then, she is different. We did a test last year, and I was very concentrated on the exercises. I was thinking about the answers and accidentally looked at my teacher and gave her my bitch face. Since then, she was different towards me, more reserved, didn't make eye contact with me in class anymore. Even now, she still does this. She's still nice to me, but the atmosphere has changed. What do you think I should do? Oh. Have you ever given a, a bitch face to somebody, Eric? Well, I mean, everybody's got their resting bitch face or everybody's got their like, you know, you don't want to make it like I don't like sometimes I don't like to make myself too approachable because then people will monopolize your time. You know, they'll just take it like, oh, hey, hey what's up? man? Blah, blah, blah. And you just kind of like, you know, you got to have your like end the sentence statements, you know, things like, well, thank you. Have a nice day. You know what I mean? Well, it was yes. good talking to you. Yes. You know what I mean? There's a certain inflection of like, hey, this is done, man. <laughs> so <laughs> so whoever this girl is, she probably, you know, it's uh, she, her emotions are right on her face. So you're making somebody to that other person feels like, ooh, well, they're probably just uncomfortable thinking that they're m m pissing you off. But, yeah. you know, you get what you ask for, you know? There, yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe you can counterbalance it since you had a really gnarly bitch face. Maybe you can do like, yeah. I, I don't know, a smiley face or like a yeah. A well, that, now, but now that you've established that you have a bitchy side to yourself, you can also also show the other side again. Exactly, the contrast would be great because then people will know. Oh, that's that face. Don't mess with her today. And then the other face is like, oh, she looks like she's in a good mood today. So let me go. But if you're always in one or the other, always in one, people never know what your emotions are. That's why people say that. People go, yeah. like, well, why are you always, what's up? What's up with your face? Why are you always funky? And they go, I'm not. I'm just, this is just my face. Then once, that's why people ask that. And then after that, you kind of go, oh, okay. Then, then people are back to thinking they own your time. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's this vicious cycle. I, it's you a know, vicious I cycle. I remember when I lived in on the East Coast and I grew up on a farm where we waved to people that were crossing the street or, or driving right, past right, us. Right. I did that in New York and it did not work well. And I remember I would smile yeah, yeah. and then just too many homeless people conversations. And I had to learn how to just take it down with yeah, a friend. Yeah, you learn how to like, yeah, you learn how to like, oh, you know what? I had to survive. You know, it's just, it's a time and place. Ex you know, yeah, small, exa exactly. Yeah. It's like, I, yeah. I'm sorry, subway employee, I can't speak with you and have a conversation about um, the political environment today. Oh, yeah, especially a certain Yeah, right, right, right. Especially at certain times, you just got to go, uh Oh, I didn't want to get into this conversation. I saw a guy at the post office, you know, and he, he's like an older gentleman, and he's up in the front and the, and the guy at working, he's this young black dude. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the guy, the, the old guy, he's like, Hey, so how you doing? You know, he's like, you have any stamps? He's and then he starts talking, how you doing? And, and, the, and yeah. the guy's like, you know, and then the old guy just start starts in. Oh man, this this Trump stuff, huh? And he just starts going in, you know. And, and I saw the dude behind the counter. And the guy was like, "Yo, man, I'm just I'm doing my nine to five shift at the post office. 
I'm not going to change the world in this conversation right here. So, you know, he just had the whole, you know, and, but the guy was, and then he, then like, he said something inappropriate, you know, the guy's like, you know, yeah, they should just take all those people out there and shoot them. You know, it's like, it was something like that, you know, something where you just go, you just go, oh, wow. I don't know if I want to be in this conversation. And then everybody, you know, in line is quiet. You know, everybody's just like, whoa. Then, you know, and when some, somebody's at a certain age, you just kind of go, well, there we go. You know, then the guy starts going into personal state. He's like, yeah, my phone. Yeah, you know, my phone doesn't work. You know, I haven't had a phone service in like two months. And, and the company told me they're going to send me a new phone. And they haven't done it yet. Like he's going on and on about his things. You know what I mean? I just kind of, you know, I, I'm in line behind like, yo, man, listen, get your stamps and move on. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a time and place for all this. So anyways, yes. what's the next one? <laughs> all right. The next one. <clears throat> this is found by Philip, who found it on Reddit. It says, me wants to be vegan, but my whole family hates it. I want to be vegan as I'm currently vegetarian, but my family hates it because they all prepare and eat meat. And then they feel it's too much effort to buy a few things so I can prepare my own food. I now have to buy my own food to eat. Otherwise, I don't eat. They want me to eat with them for dinner, but I get constantly picked on and mocked about it and get yelled at for being detached. What can I do? Well, this is a lot right here. Okay. And I don't know yeah, why you're doing like, like a, a full I meal. Why you're I don't know why you're performing every question. I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't know you know, if that's I, a thing that you do on the show, but you can just read the question. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to keep the listeners engaged. I get a lot of feedback because I used to be like, I want to be oh, vegan they, they, as I'm currently oh. a vegetarian. But well, you don't I'm have to trying. do it like that either. You're not doing a meditation, uh, you know, sleep exercise. All right. So this one's tough. This one's tough because, you know, you can play both sides of this uh, thing because one, if I'm Jewish and I go to a Christian ceremony, I can't be the one Jewish at the Christian ceremony talking about, yeah, so when are y'all going to do the uh, whatever the Jewish thing is? You know, they're like, yo, bro, you're this, this, mm. this is our thing. You're here with us. So, mm. you know what I mean? Like, you okay. got to tone it down. All right. So, that's the thing. If you're the one vegan at a not vegan house, Deal, deal with your stuff. Go shopping, man. I have a little section in this refrigerator that's like Bobby's, Johnny's, whatever the guy's name is. What's his name? Philip. Philip in the refrigerator. Philip's, you know, Philip's nonsense section, you know, and it's like that's where the tofu is and the vegetables and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And then you, uh, you know, you have your thing. How is it other people's responsibility to take care of your make believe? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Your Scientology of eating. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, that's <laughs> on you, bro. That's on you. You know, because like eating healthy is a completely different, like if somebody's like, I want to eat healthy, then eat, you can eat healthy. You know, that's a whole different thing. You know, you're encouraging the family to eat healthy. But if it's strictly vegan, if, if you're just like, hey, I'm anti meat, because vegan is not necessarily healthy. There's a lot of non healthy vegan foods. You know, oh, true. So true. there's a lot of like processed foods. Like, you know, it's like a cultural thing. If, if you're somebody that's like, I do not like the mistreatment of animals in any way. So that's why I'm vegan. That's an extreme version of it, you know? But then you have people that are just like, hey, I'm a vegetarian or I'm a, you know, I want to eat healthy. If you want to be healthy, then you can encourage your family to eat healthy and ask, also ask, hey, if you're going to have steak, can you also make a couple of sides that I can eat? You know, it's not like they just making meat. You know what I mean? Then make, but see, when you're vegan, you're all like, well, I don't want to have dairy and I don't want to have, that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay? So that's why you need to take care of you. But if you just want to like, you know, that's why if it's like, you go, hey, well, can you make the, the vegetables this time and not have butter? Can we use oil instead of butter? Uh, mm. Can you make the, you know, it's like, those are the type of things you can go, you can compromise with people. But like, you know, if you're one of these people that's in everybody's face about it too, like, well, you know what they did to get that cow? It's like, yeah, you yeah. know, I, I, I agree. I mean, I the, you have to deal with the negative side of that too. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I was going to go back to heed advice from Inspirebot, give guilt tripping a try. I mean, if, if this doesn't come to, but that's probably why they make fun of him though. He probably is doing that. Oh, like at a certain point, you might be right. You know what I'm saying? Right. At a certain point you're like, okay, enough's enough. You're making me uncomfortable. You know, you, you know what you can like, do? Well, I'm trying to make you uncomfortable because, you know, the, the cow's uncomfortable too when they're being slaughtered. You know, it's like, if you're that guy, then you get what you deserve. Okay. <laughs> that's that's you know? fair. If you're trying to take the one sacred moment when the family's all together <laughs> and right, eating right. 
And then you're like, oh, God, should we have a ceremony for all the dead cows that have died for yeah, you guys to yeah. just shove in your mouths? Then, yeah, if you're yeah, like, if you're walking around the room with one of those Catholic, you know, incense things, because it's like, you know, you know, if every time your, your mom comes in with the food, you're like, shame, <laughs> shame. <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? You're God, just like, like, okay, you, you, if you're being an asshole, you deserve whatever you get from your family. But just try to, but in all honesty, real advice is just like try to find some compromise. But you need to also like this is your choice. It's your it's your decision. No one else is responsible for you but you. So if you want to eat a certain way, then you go out and eat a certain way. Stop making it other people's problem or responsibility. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You could also to be more positive. You could hey, you could say, hey, I would love to cook for the whole family. If we do a vegan night, maybe I could cook right, some vegan exactly. stuff. Right, exactly. Compromise. Then, yeah, and then you cook it, and then you will hone in your skills on being a chef, which you're going to have to do for the rest of your life because you're a vegan now. So I, you can't I, I trust have a buddy anybody. of mine. I have a buddy of mine who's vegan. Um, my buddy, he's a comic, Ian Edwards. He's vegan. He's been vegan. And him and I and our other friend, Gerard Carmichael, we always go to eat. We go out to eat like once right. every few months before all this, we would go to a place and we would eat, you know? And Ian's vegan. So, but we would still go to steakhouses. You know what I'm saying? And Ian, mm -hmm. Ian would have what he has, and we have what I what we have, you know. And mm -hmm. it's just, it just works out. Occasionally, we'd go to a vegan place, but it's actually easier to service. Going to like a nice steakhouse, it's mm -hmm. they always have a vegan option, and it's a lot of great vegetables on the menu. So you know, we we found we find ways to compromise. It's just you know that's a personal choice. You don't got to be you have your personal choice all in everybody's face. Ex yeah, exactly. That's when it starts to just. It starts to harbor resentment among right the exactly, parties. and right, that right. ends up to boarding a boat and throwing off all the tea because I yeah, think that exactly. You know, so, I think, like you said, compromise, go to places, or be in environments where you're not shaming the other people for murdering right. animals, and you're also able to enjoy a nice soybean latte or whatever. Exactly, or or some some fake chicken is on the plate. You know what I mean? Yeah, or totally. that genetically modified impossible meat, which yeah, I, I I don't know what went into that or like how many. But I, I get it. If, hey, I get it. It was probably something we're gonna need in the future. So you know, I think we're gonna be eating. Um, what is it? What is that bug? Uh, there's some um, crickets. Not mus crickets. Yeah, crickets. In ten, in 10 years will be like, Ooh, did you have that good cricket skate steak at Sizzler? You know what I mean? It's going to be, you know, because they're easy, you know, they're, they take very little water. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of high in protein. You know, they just, mm -hmm. we just have to, it's a, a mental mind state that we have to like flip our, and then it'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I did have some cricket protein powder for a while because they use up way less green or, or um, consume way less greenhouse gases than cows or way less methane emissions. And then mm -hmm. they also take up less water and all that stuff, but they're pretty disgusting. So I stopped because I well, kept finding go. legs in the powder. So I could Well, it is what it is, man. <laughs> I, couldn't I couldn't do it. Damn it. Yeah, it's a mental but, thing. It's a mental block. It's like people that don't like sushi. It's just a mental block. Once we get past it, you know, Cause, cause like, why don't we have a mental block about like, why is a cricket disgusting and a cow is not like, why, if you really think about it, if you really think about it, a cow is an animal, you know, like what, what is, why is that? But we've just made it. Okay. Well, because the mainstream you know? media, they teach us to be afraid of crickets because there are all these movies where roaches are sinister and evil and lurking in every corner. If they had movies about cows that were hiding in your closet or under your bed that were going to go yeah. and murder you, then maybe we'd be more afraid of cows. Maybe, maybe. But I guess we'll never know. But also, I feel like we're so distanced from the actual slaughter of the cow and butchering of it and things like that. Yeah, that's like, why you don't want to play like, you know, you don't want to be that person that's always like, you know, hey, sending people that video of like, this is what they do. Like, I've seen one of those yeah. videos and it is part of the reason why I don't drink milk anymore. Oh, you don't drink milk anymore? No, I don't drink milk. I only drink like oat milk and, you know, those that's, type of things. Wifey and I have been off of dairy and we've been drinking yeah. oat milk. It's phenomenal. So yeah, good. oat milk is great. I love yeah. oat milk. Yeah, nice. All right, well, 
speaking of oat milk, I feel like our advice has rise to the top, just like the cream of a dairy product and not oat milk, but <laughs> we have arrived at the end of the podcast. So first off, Eric, thank you so much for joining and helping give advice. It's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guilt trip me into it. So I'm here, <laughs> <laughs> you know, inspire about work some of the time. And then I showed my bitch face. So it really, really helped. But Eric, well, I was going to see ask you in person. Yeah. Yes. I was going to ask, what else do you have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Where can people follow oh, you? There's all nothing that really stuff. to plug, man. Just we already we already talked about the things you want to plug. Listen to my podcast, yeah. Riffin with Griffin. Uh, you can find that on YouTube and most uh, audio po- audio platforms. I'm on Twitch daily. You can see on uh, Twitch, Eric Griffin Gaming, and then on YouTube, I put the videos up sometimes on you know on Eric Griffin Gaming there too. It's both Eric Griffin Gaming, and then I'm just Eric Griffin on everything: Snapchat, Twitter, you know, all that stuff. The, the you know Instagram, and just find me there. And you know, and uh, thanks, dude. Listen, thanks for having me. It was it wasn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be, and. <laughs> That, that's the usual yeah, response I, was, I get. I was like, is, is Andy Gibbs' son going to interview me right now? Do people even know who that is? <laughs> it's like, is this going to be about the, B, about the Bee Gees? Like, what, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, it's stepson. But yes, no, it uh, it ended up being a great time. Thank you so much for for. Yeah, and I'll see, I'll see you in things. Arizona. And, and those people, you know, I'll be in Arizona all weekend. So come on out and watch. And Michael Yo is going to be on the show as well. So it's going to be yes. me and Michael Yo. So that'll be fun. Uh, and awesome. again, but lower your expectations when you come, guys. Again, I, I, I'm, I'm, I actually, it's funny as I wrote down a joke about my, 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 you know, because of what we were talking about, because it just made me think about, because I always write things about my girl down. So I wrote, that's about my girl. My girl is sweet until she's not, you know what I mean? But, but when she's sick. <laughs> oh, nice. You know? Oh, I love so that. I said, oh, that. I said, oh, that could be a good joke. So and there we go. So that's how you, that's how it works. My advice to you comics out there is like, something comes to you, write it down. Cause then the concept will form itself around it to turn into a bit or a, you know, a, a chunk of material. Do you have a handy dandy notebook or do you write it in your Yeah, I do now. Or... I do now. I have now. Once I b- b- booked this gig again, I was like, ooh, I'm a, the daddy's rusty. I got to <laughs> so I grease just, like, those always... wheels. Yeah, oh. man. I got to grease them. But anyways, man, thanks for having nice. me and you be good. And I'll see you on uh, Friday or Saturday, whatever day you come. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Eric. Right, have a good night. No problem, man. You All too. Right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.